2015, what are some of the film or even television shows that are out where there's some very deeply wounded, fascinating people? That okay, watch? best example, True Detective season one. Um, and I think television, by the way, is 80% of our business now as story consultants. Five years ago, it was 80% movies. Why has TV become this explosive golden age? Uh, and it's because now there are no constraints on what you can see in sex, what you can say. Television has no more rules. So what you saw in a, in a story like True Detective is what I call going from saving a cat to killing the cat. Because that's where we are now. We are, we are constructing dark heroes that people want to watch. Why do people want to watch dark heroes? Because nobody's all good and nobody's all bad. And that's part of why superhero movies are failing because that's not us. We all know as people that we are not only good, we're also bad. And so killing the cat simply means showing us dark heroes who are like us. We can accept that. We couldn't 20, 30 years ago. Television was just about good people and really bad people. Well, now television has become more like the Russian novel of the late 19th century where Tolstoy was writing where people aren't good or bad. Everybody's a villain and everyone's a hero. So this dark hero is more like us, okay? So in True Detective, first year, we had two heroes. We had Matthew McConaughey and we had um, uh, uh, Woody Harrelson. And these two guys were both deeply wounded, but one of them had taken their wounds and decided that they were just gonna live in a happy place. And the other one had taken his wound, which was his child had been killed, and he decided the world was horrible and dark and meaningless. And so for an entire year, we watched these two guys bicker and argue with each other. And what the argument was really about was, is the world a horrible, meaningless place? Or is it a place of just love and happiness where we all can live? And that argument between those two guys was really made up the interesting part of this whole story. Because we all believe really the world's both. That it's got poison in it and it's also got good in it. But that's why this dark hero is becoming what we all want to see, Breaking Bad, the dark hero. Um, really, The Sopranos, Mad Men, um, these are all examples of dark heroes, and that's what television is really full of right now. Wally and the Beaver today <laughs> would be considered, would it be Eddie Haskell that we would want to watch? What was interesting about Wally and the Beaver was when it came out, it was the first television show to really show kids as not just these perfect little perky kids. They actually argued with each other. For then, that was, they were dark heroes. Both Wally and the Beaver, because the other shows were like um, uh, the Donna Reed show and stuff, kids were just automatons. So story is marching towards more and more realistic ideas of what we are as human beings and none of us are real heroes, and none of us are real villains. We're all a mixture. But the core wounds in True Detective were about thinking that the world is an awful place because Matthew McConaughey's character had lost his kid, and Woody Harrelson's character didn't, didn't feel lovable. So he put on a happy face, but he didn't connect to anybody really in his life either. So it's a love story between these two guys. And as dark heroes, they come together and rescue each other in the end and form the only real bond they've ever had in their life with each other. And this buddy relationship is, comes out of their darkness and their dark places. And I just wanted to amplify on something Ceci said, which is that I think part of the reason Nick Pizzolatto, who's a genius, had a had a second season of True Detective that wasn't fabulous, this last one, is he listened to his critics. His critics all said, you know what, Nick, he can't write women characters. That's just had Woody and Matt, and that's all he had. So this season, I think Nick listened to that, and he tried to write really great female characters, but he, he, he lost his focus and so the story was so dark, and the, all, all the guys died, and they all died tragically. 
He had a real tragic ending this season, but I think it was because he listened to, and I think he'll tell you this, he listened to the critics that were, that were criticizing his vision of the first season. It's deadly to listen to criticism at the wrong point. It's just deadly. It never serves us well. And so when, we are, when, we're, when we're thinking and cooking and loving our story, the last thing we want to hear is a criticism of it. It takes us away from our story. And I think you have to be very careful about who you listen to.